Start the tour at the sculpture nearest the parking lot on the east side of the park, otherwise known as Tolman Barrow. Welcome to Richard Green Linear Park and the Calum Moore Environmental Artwork. Calum Moore is the collective name of the five freestanding granite sculptures we will be looking at today. Calum, Latin for chisel, is a remote constellation in the southern skies, also known as a sculptor's tool. Moore refers to the rolling, infertile land of northern England and Scotland from which the artist drew inspiration when creating the sculptures. The 22 pieces of Texas pink granite were mined in Marble Falls, Texas, a quarry west of Austin, and weighed a combined total of 540 tons. Sixteen flatbed trucks were used to move the finished pieces to Arlington. Start the tour at the sculpture nearest the parking lot on the east side of the park. It is the one that looks like three large rectangular stones with a hole through the center stone. It is called Tolman Barrow. All of the Calum Moore pieces have a Celtic-inspired name because the person who commissioned the artwork in 1984, Jane Mathis Kelton, was of Scottish heritage and wanted the art to reflect Celtic history. The artist, Norm Hines, studied the ancient stone groupings in Great Britain called megalithic monuments for inspiration. Tolman means whole stone, literally, a stone with a hole. There are many famous Tolmans in Great Britain. It was once believed a person who passed through the hole of a Tolman would be healed of illness or purified. Barrow is a term sometimes used in Britain to mean mountain or hill, but it also refers to a sacred site like a burial mound. The ribbon symbol carved here suggests the concept that there is no beginning and no end to anything in life. It also resembles the symbol called Traquitra. The Traquitra appears in many religions, in Christian symbology, it stands for the Holy Trinity, but it can also refer to life, death, and rebirth, the cycle of life, earth, air, and water, the elements of nature, maiden, mother, and crone. Feel free to touch the stones and trace your fingers over the Celtic symbols carved on some of the pieces. The pathways that weave around the sculptures are meant to encourage you to discover the pieces, to contemplate them up close. They are not meant to be viewed from afar. This sculpture also has signatures etched on the foundation under the stones, those of the current City of Arlington Council members and staff who signed it when it was reinstalled in June of 2009. Walk south towards the street and follow the crushed granite path along Randall Mill Road to the next grouping called Tantara. Tantara is the tallest of the five structures and stands at 34 feet. Tara is the name the ancient Celts gave the home of their gods, and Tan means fire. Tantara is a natural echo chamber where only the person standing between the pillars can hear the echo. The concave circles that make the echo possible may also refer to the idea of eternity, because a circle has no beginning and no end. Tantara also has a rope pattern that you'll see carved in other pieces in Calum Moore, as if the pieces are tied together. At this point, you get a great view of Arlington's Cowboys Stadium. It is the world's largest enclosed NFL stadium. It can hold 80,000 to 100,000 people, depending on the seating configuration. It officially opened on June 6, 2009, with a concert by George Strait. The retractable roof, the largest of its kind in the world at more than 660,000 square feet, is meant to remind fans of the unique open roof of the Cowboys' former home in Irving. The final cost to build the stadium was over $1 billion. The Dallas Cowboys are the country's most watched NFL team and the second most profitable professional sports franchise in the world, second only to England's Manchester United Football Club. Walk west on Randall Mill towards the Cowboys Stadium. Turn right before the bridge to follow the path along the creek to the three freestanding stones set in a triangular pattern called De Danon. Daedanon refers to the Tuatha Daedanon, the people of the goddess Danu, one of the great ancient tribes of Ireland according to Celtic mythology. 
In popular legend, they have been linked to the numerous fairies rumored to inhabit the Irish landscape. There is a labyrinth carved on the inside of each stone. Labyrinths are symbols in many ancient cultures, but they are most often associated with meditation, which contributes to the artist's intent to create a place for reflection. Kayla Moore originally was installed at the headwaters of Johnson Creek near I-20 in Matlock, where Lowe's is located today. Jane Mathis Kelton, who commissioned the artwork, intended to build an office park in that area. In designing Kayla Moore, Norm Hines, who was an art teacher at Pomona College in California, intended to create a quiet, meditative space adjacent to what was to be a busy hub, a place where people could relax, wander, explore, and have some contact with nature. In this new location, the same theory applies. Kayla Moore is a respite from the activity of the entertainment district. The waterway you're standing along is called Johnson Creek. The park around it is Richard Green Linear Park. It's called a linear park because it is much longer than it is wide and uses public land along the creek. The park features a 1.35-mile lighted trail loop, a pedestrian bridge, and more than 2,000 trees, 1,500 shrubs, and 15,000 native plants. The park, named for Arlington's mayor from 1987 to 1997, and Caleb Moore are part of a larger project, authorized by Congress for the environmental restoration, flood control, and erosion protection of the Johnson Creek watershed. Continue along the path to Sarsoon Serre, the next grouping. This piece is lit up from the bottom at night. Sarsoon is the name of the sandstone blocks found throughout southern England, including Stonehenge. Sare means castle or fortress in the Welsh language. This one also has the rope pattern that we already saw on Tentara. Although Kayla Moore probably reminds you of Stonehenge, the artist has said it is in no way intended to be a reflection or recreation of the ancient site. It does not represent a constellation and has no religious overtones whatsoever. The stones are made of granite, and unlike the granite you pick out for your kitchen counters, Heinz looked for pieces with varying color and imperfections to reflect the imperfection of man. He then used a blowtorch to give the finished stones a weathered look. Walk towards the pond. It is called Holtz Pond, named for former Texas Rangers announcer Mark Holtz. The Texas Rangers were formed in 1972 when the Senators moved from Washington, D.C. They played in a former minor league stadium adjacent to the Arlington Convention Center until 1994 when the Rangers' ballpark in Arlington opened with 49,115 seats. Mayor Richard Green was instrumental in developing a public-private partnership with the Texas Rangers Baseball Club that resulted in the new Rangers Stadium. The ballpark at Arlington cost $191 million to build and included additional features such as a baseball museum, a children's learning center, a four-story office building, a youth baseball park, and a 12-acre lake. Walk to the stone seating area facing the pond to get the best view of the waterfall sculpture in the pond, Morna Lynn. Morna means beloved, and Lynn means waterfall. It is also lit up at night. In order to install it in the lake, a temporary peninsula was built out to the point where Morna Lynn stands, and then removed after installation. At the bottom of the sculpture, the initials RG are carved in the granite, put there by former mayor Richard Green. His wife, Sylvia, was a member of a group called the Arlington Foundation for the Arts during the time the sculptures were being carved. This group traveled to Marble Falls to see the progress of the work, and Heinz let them use his tools to carve their initials in the piece. The link between technology and nature extended even to the production of the sculptures, which were made from natural materials and took a natural shape, but were created with power tools. Kayla Moore was at its original location in South Arlington from 1986 to 1987. The first Arlington Scottish Games were held there before being relocated to UTA. However, the office park that was supposed to be built around it never materialized. The land was sold and the artwork was donated to the city. However, the high cost of moving the pieces, just short of a million dollars, meant they have been in storage since then. 
the relocation and installation to Richard Green Linear Park in the summer of 2009 was made possible thanks to monetary donations and revenue generated from a tax increment reinvestment zone. Norm Hines also contributed to the new park design and placement of the stones. The new location, if not exactly to Hines' original idea, still fulfills the original intention. Hines wanted to create art that symbolizes man's connection with the universe and to connect the past with the technological future, to remind us of Earth when we're surrounded by steel and glass. Now that it sits in the shadow of the thoroughly modern Cowboys Stadium, it certainly serves the same purpose. The living humanistic form of the sculpture, juxtaposed with the high-tech structures around it, creates a reflective atmosphere. Hines said in a documentary about Kayla Moore that people cannot live in technology alone. The soul cries out for something that touches you more deeply. You are encouraged to sit and view Morna Lynn and the other sculptures of Kayla Moore at your leisure. On behalf of the City of Arlington, we thank you for visiting Kayla Moore. For additional information on the sculpture or any of Arlington's parks, go to naturallyfun.org.